good afternoon everybody um, i think um, i did have a daunting task because i'm sure you all are looking forward to lunch um, maybe catching up with the calls that you may have missed uh, catching up with some work that you may have missed and maybe the chat with the colleagues who are here um, uh, for this uh, summit nevertheless we are government officers so we always speak what we want to speak so i will definitely make use of this opportunity to talk about some of uh, the initiatives of uh, government of india uh, before i uh, speak about uh, ease of doing business initiatives uh, uh, of government of india i would like to uh, recall one uh, experience uh, during covid times uh, i am sure that is uh, this kind of an experience is not at all new for any one of you but it was a kind of new for for me i am a humanities student and i have spent a substantial um, career in the field of accounts and finance and now i have been uh, working in the field of um, regulations uh, simplification of regulations and uh, uh, related issues so this was uh, march of 2020 india had um, just gone into into the lockdown and many people were grappling with the situation of working from home etc whereas many of the government officers were still uh, uh, going to office and we uh, we had a situation where one of the political leaders um, had a formal interaction with uh, the chancellor of germany and um, we were about to um, give um, as you would know paracetamol to germany and we were uh, likely to get uh, uh, i think about 1000 ventilators i don't exactly remember now so when we were trying to prepare for for that um, interaction for that meeting uh, the quantity of paracetamol that we could give to germany was told to us i got to know that from some some sources and that shocked me that shocked me of course it made me uh, feel very proud about the pharmaceutical industry of my own country but i was pleasantly surprised and pleasantly shocked to know the quantity that you were ready to uh, give to some other country when we also uh, needed uh, paracetamol for the domestic consumption and i was given the confidence that we would still have uh, uh, necessary stock um, for for uh, our own country this this uh, understanding was given to us so that was i think my first uh, ever formal uh, understanding of the strength of the pharmaceutical um, industry uh, of our country going forward when i am working on on uh, ease of doing business and related issues we interact with lots of uh, industry we interact with industry across sector including um, uh, pharmaceutical sector sector we did uh, conduct uh, intense industry interactions in um, uh, from january to march 2022 wherein uh, we interacted with lot of pharmaceutical industry we had lot of learnings um, in 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 that process and some of those um, have also gone into uh, certain other um, work certain other exercises that we have done over a over a period of time uh, as my uh, uh, the speaker uh, uh, mr gupta who spoke before me he talked about uh, digitization he also talked about the safety of patients etc so ease of doing business initiatives of government of india have always uh, put lot of emphasis on uh, digitization we also have been working on a project some of you may be aware called national single window system national single window system uh, right now if i can put it in a very simple terms has two aspects one is what we call as kya which is know your approvals so if i want to start a business in india say in uh, i want to start a hotel then what are the approvals what are the permissions that i would require uh, those that that uh, part of the nsws is dynamic so i have asked some questions and depending on the answer that i give to those questions i will be told what permissions will be required so if i want to start a hotel in delhi and if i want to start it in mumbai the requirements will be different so one aspect of national single window system is no your approvals the other one is actually getting the approval so applying for a particular permission or approval and getting it through national single window system so these are two important parts of uh, the national single window system uh, i am sure most of you are aware that national pharmaceutical policy is in the public domain for uh, stakeholder consultations right now 
and uh, one of the um, uh, policy um, suggestions in, in, in that policy is uh, related to single window system as well. So, um, synchronizing all uh, permissions, all approvals, bringing all the stakeholders together on a on a single platform so that uh, the time is saved and even the cost is saved uh, which is spent on uh, obtaining these approvals or permissions. So, uh, that 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 flows from our focus on uh, digitization about the pharmaceutical industry we we are aware that the, there are specific challenges in terms of multiple regulators lack of coordination uh, among uh, among these regulators time taken for certain permissions like uh, environmental clearance uh, if i can uh, if, if i can put it uh, we have been aware about it. We are also aware about overlapping and sometimes outdated uh, regulatory um, requirements. Last year, um, not, not even last year, actually January 2023, uh, there was one conference which was of um, chief secretaries of all the states and the Honorable Prime Minister presided over that uh, conference. For in, in that conference, we, uh, we made a one presentation about uh, cost of regulation and regulatory impact assessment. Now what do I mean by cost of regulation? You, you all would be aware about it. To remain compliant to the regulations, the cost that you have to incur is cost of regulation. And that's, that's quite, a, quite a cost for the industry. Uh, we, we recently ran a survey throughout the country and we came to know that it's, it's actually a substantial cost that industry has to incur. When we were working on this cost of regulation related um, activities, one of the pharmaceutical industry uh, persons uh, gave me uh, an interesting example. Uh, I, I, as you all are aware, fire extinguisher uh, system is very important, very relevant in, in any, any factory setup. And um, certain regulations require sprinklers uh, to be placed in, in, in the factory. So, uh, the gentleman told me that uh, there are certain triggers. Now, if there is a trigger, the, the sprinklers will get activated. Now, when these sprinklers get activated, there is a moisture. And for a pharmaceutical industry, that moisture is detrimental to the quality of the product that you, you may have. It may be detrimental to the machinery that you are using. It may also be detrimental to the input or the uh, raw material that you, that you have. And, um, we are living in, in the world when we actually have much more sophisticated fire extinguishing systems which can serve the purpose of fire extinguishing and at the same time minimize the damage uh, to, to the factory setup. But uh, I understand that uh, the, the requirement of sprinklers uh, as per the regulation still, still continues. So, um, we understand that there are certain outdated regulatory requirements. Uh, technology would uh, definitely enable us to do away with certain uh, requirements or even um, uh, as was mentioned in the previous uh, speech, the, the data sharing, effective use of the data that we already have, these are uh, definitely going forward um, issues on which we uh, as a government have to work along with of course the, the stakeholders. Uh, the cost of regulation survey that we recently conducted, I would like to uh, speak about that in it for a minute or two. As I already mentioned, cost of regulation is a subset of cost of doing business. Because when you have to do business, you need capital, uh, you need to pay taxes, um, uh, you need to procure um, raw material, uh, you need to spend um, uh, money on marketing, advertising, etc. But cost of regulation, which is a subset of that, is basically uh, to remain compliant with the regulations. And the regulations could be at the central level, which is government of India level, or they could be at the state level. We being a federal setup, at the state level also, we would have certain regulations to comply with. Uh, now we are trying to look at uh, uh, different types of costs through this survey, one of which is uh, time cost. So say for example, if you are supposed to get environmental clearance in say 90 days and if you don't get it in 90 days, say you, you uh, get it in 180 days. So the 90 uh, days delay that, uh, that has caused a lot of trouble to the industry. Maybe your inventory management gets affected, maybe you already have a labor which remains idle uh, and you have a cost to pay for that. All 
all those aspects of uh, the the time cost we have we have tried to uh, study we have tried to understand we have also looked at the time that your resources your human resources have to spend on simply filling up certain forms and filing certain returns so um, uh, i understand that environment related permissions have forms which are very complex and they are long forms lot of documentation is required you need to uh, you need to submit lot of um, say project report or, or similar documents along with with those forms which also takes substantial time of uh, your human, human resources so many times it so happens that you got a permission and you want to renew it same information is sought uh, when which you have already submitted when you got the initial permission or initial approval so again that documentation again those papers again those those reports a lot of time is spent on 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 this activity as well so uh, we have tried to look at the time cost we have tried to look at the uh, look at the cost that industry will incur for uh, uh, doing the paperwork uh, etc we have also looked at intermediary cost because regulatory requirements are sometimes complex because regulatory requirements are sometimes confusing uh, you need to hire intermediary say chartered accountant company secretary lawyer or in, in common parlance some kind of an agent some kind of a facilitator why do you have to do that that basically because you have to concentrate your time and energy on the core business you cannot go on spending your time in filling up the form and submitting the documents so for for uh, uh, for regular meeting regular requirements you are hiring an intermediary and none of them are cheap there is a cost there is a huge substantial cost involved in um, uh, uh, hiring intermediaries which is again affecting the competitiveness of of the business or competitiveness of the industry and this takes me to the uh, the, the theme of uh, the summit that india act uh, uh, 100 so uh, i think going forward for india to um, uh, do well um, requires some hard measures on part of the government on part of the industry and on part of all stakeholders one of which is to make our industry more competitive the pharmaceutical industry in india is already at a, 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 a if i understand it correctly at a reasonable position where we are able to uh, uh, manufacture drugs at uh, say uh, i don't know whether i should say uh, at a reasonable price but our situation is not not that bad so we actually need to pick up from from the uh, the pedestal where we already are and that would require uh, as i already mentioned simplification of regulatory regime saving time and cost for the industry so that you can concentrate your energies on production and um, uh, on the core business we also uh, maybe need a resilient policy because the field of uh, uh, pharmaceutical uh, industry it, it changes very fast there's a lot of research going on globally a lot of use of technology uh, uh, which which uh, which makes it very important that the regulations are also resilient they are able to meet the requirements of the industry and not burden the industry this is an industry where safety and well being is very very important we certainly cannot compromise with the safety and the well being but at the same time we have to uh, have a regulatory design which will facilitate the industry which will facilitate industry's growth and this particular sector can contribute to india's uh, growth story as we all are aware we we had a target of 5 trillion economy we've already reached 4 trillion economy so maybe we it's time for us to um, uh, improve our target now and um, uh, and work towards it i'm i'm confident that pharmaceutical industry will play a very very important pertinent role uh, in india's growth story we as department for promotion of industry and internal trade uh, uh, uh do lot of consultations stakeholder consultations we also facilitate a uh, kind of tripartite meeting so if if a particular industry has any grievances if they have any concern if you have any suggestions they may not be related to my department they may be related to department of pharmaceuticals they may be uh, related to department of ayush department of health and family welfare even ministry of corporate affairs sometimes so we facilitate these interactions we take up issues with respective ministries and we try to provide a relief to uh, to the to the industry 
I would uh, close my um, keynote address uh, with two requests to all of you. One is, uh, national pharmaceutical policy is open for stakeholder consultations and you're supposed to be uh, providing um, views on it by the, I think, by the end of this month. So I would urge you all to have a look at it and provide your comments so that we can uh, uh, develop uh, an informed uh, policy. I would also urge all of you to have a look at the national single window system because the user feedback is very important for us, for any system to be useful, to be relevant, to be effective and to be efficient. It has to be actually used by the users and give us feedback so that we know where uh, we, need, we need to make uh, improvements um, and we would uh, be happy to work upon that. Uh, and we would, we are always open to any kind of suggestions coming, uh, coming up uh, to us from the industry. OPPI has had uh, um, uh, uh, interactions with us in the past. Also, uh, we also uh, spoke to OPPI about the cost of regulation survey that we have recently conducted. So we would be happy to receive your suggestions. We would be happy to uh, work together uh, with the industry so that we together uh, contribute to uh, India's growth story. I am thankful to OPPI for giving me this opportunity to come here and speak to you all uh, about uh, our initiatives and I would look forward to more meaningful interaction in the future. Thank you very much. Ms. Devasthali, may I request you to please stay with me a moment longer. I'd like to here invite Mr. Gadandeep Singh Bedi, Managing Director and Head of Human Pharma, Moringa Ingleham, India, to please present a small token of our gratitude to Ms. Priya Devasthali. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give her a big round of applause.